Um, I think it's going to take a minute for the presentation to come up, but uh, I work for a company called Tokaboka. Um, and what I'm going to say is I'm not a game designer. I think in the slush leaflet it says I'm a game designer, but I'm actually a play designer. And today I'm going to talk a lot about how we at Tokaboka see play. And this is where I would change my slide. Um, <laughs> But we're based in Sweden, in Stockholm. Um, and yeah, it's like I don't want to say too much because I'll run ahead of my slides. But uh, we've been around for over three years now. Um, and we focus on making apps for children. Does anyone know about Tokoboka here? Can I see a raise, raise of hands so I know how much to say about it? OK. Yeah, I'm just going to talk a tiny bit about the company and then go talk more about play. <laughs> Am I on? We're still working on the slides. You probably have like the biggest PowerPoint <laughs> slides slides ever. So we're like still trying to. Uh, Load that apologies we had to mess up at 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 some point. Sorry. No problem. Uh, but if you want to talk a little bit more about the company, mm. uh, how big is Tokaboka and like what's the history? Yeah, and then I'll just skip forward. Yeah, we um we have an office in Stockholm, and in that office we're almost 30 people now, so it's a nice size. But we also have an office in San Francisco, um, and that office looks mainly at our marketing because. A lot of our audience is in the States. So we wanted to be closer to our audience over there. And we, we were started by two um, bald Swedes. Uh, they're called Emil Overmoir and Björn. And they worked at Bonniers, uh, which is a publisher's. And they had worked on this um, when the iPad first came out. I think Steve Jobs was presenting the iPad, and he explained sort of, well, he, when he was explaining about the iPad, he used this demo called Mag Plus, uh, and they had worked on that. I'm now just rambling. Yes! And we have no. your slides. OK. <laughs> I hope. Yay! But go ahead. Sorry okay. about that. No problem. Yeah. Um, the power of the button. OK, so I spoke about this before. This is our studio. Um, this is the Stockholm studio, and we really like to make and build things and play a lot. So I hope this expresses a little bit about, it's one of the best studios I've ever worked in. Um, we started out in 2011, and since then we've made 24 apps and had more than 80 million downloads. This is a, an overview of all the apps we have out at the moment. So my role at Tokaboka is very much about uh, w designing to and from the kid's perspective. And this can be quite challenging, because even though I feel like a kid sometimes, my life is very, very different from a kid's. If we think about the kid's life, uh, their everyday lives are basically made up by adults directing them. They're told when to get up, uh, how to learn at school, what to eat, and they take on a very sort of observatory role a lot of the time. And the one area where they can take control and experiment with things, play, is scheduled into their every day. And even this is at risk. In America, 20%, over 20% of the schools are eliminating recess. That means no playtime at all throughout the day. And to me, this seems quite drastic. It's almost as if play is this magical animal that's a threat from extinction. So with, with play at such a risk, um, we don't understand why kids can't take control of their everyday lives and play in every single aspect. Because it would be much more interesting if kids could do this. And there's also something about when a kid can play throughout their everyday, they have the ability to unleash their superpowers. 
And this is something we believe very strongly about at Tokoboka. So if we look at traditional forms of role playing, a lot of the time kids take something that exists in the adult world and role play through it and test and try different things. And it gives them an opportunity to try things out, do things in their own way and not worry about failure. If we take these three types of role playing, there's playing doctor, having a tea party and shopping at the store. Uh, we were inspired by these at Tokoboka and how the digital experience could enhance these forms of role play. So we developed Toka Doctor, Toka Tea Party, and Toka Store. And a lot of these were our earliest apps, and they were looking very much at how the device itself could become a toy. So for example, with Toka Tea Party, the iPad becomes the table that you can set up and put on the tablecloth and drag all the plates over and add your cakes. And then you can invite your toys or your friends to play around the device. So it becomes more an object and a toy in the play. And when we're talking about play, a lot, a lot of it is about playing with kids. We need to form a really strong relationship with kids in order to understand them and build empathy. And by building empathy, we can design for the needs for kids and really understand what is fun about play for them. But it can be challenging uh, trying to invite kids to play because sometimes they can feel nervous or that something's a test. So we try and make our, environment, our play environments as relaxed as possible. And we invite kids into our studio and we do things like having drawing workshops where kids will come and draw around maybe a theme or some characters. And a lot of this helps us work out like what their expectations are around certain themes and certain characters. But it's also just fun to do. We also do a lot of paper prototyping. Um, this can help work out and develop concepts with kids, but it also really helps when we're working with team members because a concept is a lot in your head and it, in able to communicate with the rest of your team members, you need to sort of get something out there and play. And of course, we do lots and lots of observing. And this is bringing kids in or going to kindergartens and watching them as they play with our products and digital um, prototypes that we've developed. And then we iterate on this every single time. And a lot of the time, we throw concepts out because they're just not fun. And we don't see how they could ever be fun for kids. And while I'm up here talking about play, while I've been spending a lot of time with kids, one thing is for certain that I am not the expert when it comes to play. The kids are. And therefore, we don't need to show them how to play. A lot of the time, when we're talking about our products, we think about them as toys. And if you think about a good toy, a toy doesn't need instructions. Play comes intuitively. A kid can just pick it up and make the play however they want. Therefore, we don't have instructions in our apps. We more set an environment and have characters and invite kids to play with this in a way that they feel is fit. Now, in his book, Blockbuster Toys, Jean de Vecchio talks about play, how play can transform a child. And he talks about three types of transformation. The story lover, the creator, and the master. And we at Tokoboka believe that our product should have the possibility to transform kids when they play with them. So we look at three types of play when we're designing our products. This is Toka Town. It's one of our latest apps. And it's an example of role playing. Um, in this app, kids can pick up and interact with almost everything. Uh, there's no pre-scripted things. The kids can decide the stories they want to tell through the characters and the context. So I'll just play you a little bit of Mia, who's age six. She's playing with Toka Town.
I don't know if you can hear her on the slide, but she's talking about how this girl is the birthday girl and they're going to have a birthday party. Stacking system, a very popular system in Tucker Town. Another example is creative play. And what's great about creative play is, uh, well, what's most important about creative play is being able to come up with unique outcomes at the end of it that you feel is you, there's you in that outcome. And with Tucker Hair Salon, you can cut, sculpt, dye, and accessorize the hair in a way that you feel like you have control. And you can come up with different unique outcomes every time. We also look a lot at exploratory play, where kids can try things out, test things, and, and just have a good time exploring things. This is Tucker Lab. Uh, and in Tucker Lab, you can take an element. I think there's 118 in the periodic table. Not that this is that based on science, but you can take an element, and you can basically torture that element. You can boil it, you can freeze it, you can whirl it around, you can mix it with other elements, and then you can get another element at the end of it. But when you're developing these type of products for kids, you have to stop and think quite a bit. Because when you're designing things for children, a lot of it will influence them in many ways. So we believe at Tokoboka that you have a responsibility to think about how your products will influence that child. This, I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with this image that's coming into toy stores and supermarkets. We have a boys' aisle, which is blue, and you have toys to do with science and engineering. And there's a girl aisle, and it's pink, and it's generally around cooking and houseware and things like that. Now, there's no problem with pink and blue, but why do we have to segregate play in this way? So at Tokoboka, instead of avoiding certain themes, we try and work out 
how these themes can be interesting for everyone who might want to play with those products. But even we can miss things. Uh, we took another look at one of our apps called, that is called Toka Robot Lab, and we realized that there was one female robot, and she was pink with a heart at her center. And when compared to all the other robots, we realized she was very, very stereotypical. So we took a look at redesigning all our robots so that kids would have a more open view as to what robots were like. And we came up with this, much more colorful, and a lot of them are based on everyday objects. And there's not so much gender messaging in this. And I just want to say, the one thing about play is when you're working with it, you have to be prepared to get messy and lose control. This is an image from one of our parties that we had recently. And I wasn't quite prepared that there were about 100 kids coming to our office. So by the time the party opened, our doors are knocked down, these kids come running in. And we've spent maybe the past three days designing a real-life Toka car racetrack with cardboard boxes and cardboard cars that you can drive around. And what do the kids do as soon as they come in? They grab all the boxes, pile them up as high as they can, and drive through them as fast as they can with their cardboard cars, thus destroying everything we'd spent ages putting time into. But this is really, really important, this ability to make things what you will, muck things up, destroy things, and then do it all over again. So this is really all I have to say about play at the moment. But before I go, I just want to give you a sneak peek of our latest app that's out now. This is a behind the scenes look at uh, what was the inspiration for this app. And it's our play, another play designer who's called Morton. And he's going to speak a bit about it. When I was six years old, we moved to a new part of town. There was a small wood behind our home. I have pretty vivid memories of all the adventures we had in this wood, but I can't recall ever actually meeting anyone else there. In fact, I'm not really sure whom I did all these things with. Maybe I was alone. Maybe that was the point. Observing nature with a child's perspective is seeing it through its details. A snail, a flower, or a pine cone. Perhaps the same is true for all contexts, but for a child, the parts are more visible than the whole. Then I guess, nature is not a wild unknown. It's an infinity of small wonders. For a long time, we were searching for that one key feature of the app that would be the focus of the whole experience. But I've come to realize that the experience not being focused is the whole point. We wanted to emulate the experience of nature, and that's not one key feature. It could be climbing a tree and screaming your lungs out, or carving the initials of someone you love into the trunk of a tree. The app is a journey. Every time you create new forests, you're creating the next location. There are always new things to explore. You'll come back to familiar places, but nothing will ever be the same. You've changed. Or something has changed.